Ebony Gray is 30 years old. This is her car and for the past few months, her home. It's just me here during the night. Each night she pulls up to the curb in South Auckland. She says sleeping here is her only safe option after being attacked in emergency accommodation. I knew that I'll be safe with my car in emergency housing. While homelessness is a problem around the world, it is a political issue in New Zealand. Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern pledged to tackle the crisis years ago. But since the shock of the pandemic, those on the front line say the situation is much worse. I came in, bye. By night, this shop front is a last refuge. By day, it's a hive of activity, and one woman is in charge. Debbie Munro called this place the walker or canoe of caring because it keeps everyone afloat. It's a bit scary knowing that if we weren't here, how would everyone cope? Everything here is free, clothes, blankets and food. Deb says demand for her food parcels has tripled since COVID. You're welcome. Working whānau are coming in for food because they just do not have enough money to eat, and that's wrong. So Deb, what do you see in terms of families that are forced to live in their car? Within the Manukau area, which would be from Manukau out to Papakura, there's a good 50 families living in cars. So this isn't people? No, no, th this is husband, wife and kids. Every month, New Zealand records the number of people seeking emergency housing. Jacinda Ardern criticised the previous government over the number of people living in their cars when campaigning for the top job in 2017. In June of that year, 93 people said they were living in their cars. Five years later, that number has exploded to 477. We will only solve a homelessness crisis if we have an honest conversation about it. The government wants New Zealanders living in their cars to come forward, but concedes moving them into emergency motels and hotels is not a solution. I don't want anybody having to make their home in a motel. It is not um, a permanent place where people should have to call home. But nor do I want anyone sleeping on the street or sleeping in their car. This is a stopgap measure. New Zealand's housing crisis is currently colliding with inflation above 7% pushing the prices of essential items up and even more New Zealanders to the brink. Zone A, operations. Full-time firefighter Leanne Ellen is struggling to make ends meet. With a young son, she sublets two rooms in her house to help cover her rent. As a parent, you know, it's heartbreaking. You feel so many emotions when you struggle financially. You feel shame. Leanne knows when power is less expensive. I try and do everything in between those times to bring down those bills. I don't run the heat pump, so that means we are, we are always cold in winter. The pressure on New Zealand households is impacting support for Jacinda Ardern. The Prime Minister enjoys immense popularity around the world, but here at home, people are asking not to be forgotten and for her to keep promises she made about helping those most in need. Since the last election, support for Jacinda Ardern's Labour Party has fallen, while the opposition has been gaining ground. And according to several polls, the right-leaning coalition could now have enough support to form government. Support for Jacinda Ardern as preferred Prime Minister has also been falling, and in one poll it is now at its lowest point since she took office. The government has made cost of living payments and is continuing to subsidise fuel. But with an election next year, the question is whether brand Ardern can hold on. In the case of Ardern, she's really staked a lot of her reputation on being anti-poverty and anti-inequality. And so it's really hard for you to have that moral authority in 2023 when you're standing on the debate stage and actually inequality's gotten worse. There is a sense that people are not moving forwards, they're going backwards. And indeed, economically, you know, for the most part, that is true. For those on the front line, there is no denying times are tougher now. But there is also an unwavering determination to help people through. I'm not religious, I'm not doing it for the fame and glory. We just see a need and we fill it in our own special little way. The walker of caring makes a difference because Debbie won't let anything stand between her and the people who rely on it. 
It's an approach she wants those in power to adopt too. Emily Clark, ABC News, Auckland.